Um, this is a work I developed a while in Osgood, and it's about the copyright crisis and what I believe are some of the reasons that are behind this crisis. So I decided to explore it from a perspective of economical behaviors and economical laws of law and psychology. In the first part of the presentation, uh, I'm going to explain to you what do I mean by copyright crisis, so then we can discuss uh, what are the possible reasons for this crisis. The concept of copyright is facing an enormous crisis. Internet technology uh, have made it clear not only for specialists, but also for the whole public that the system is flawed. Uh, this crisis can be spotted in my home country of Brazil, for example, uh, or in Europe or in Canada, uh, where we see rise of pirate parties that were found by advocates and activists that support reforms in the IP system. Uh, some of these uh, advocates uh, want to extinct the system of copyright as a whole. However, not all, not all copyright criticizers believe the system should be erased. Many people, including famous free culture advocate Lawrence Lessig, the professor at Harvard, uh, believe that copyright makes some sense, but the way the system is designed creates unfairness by giving exaggerated rights for authors and overcharging the public. I personally believe that the core of this sense of unfairness seems to reside in how differently people value copyright protected works and intellectual property. Uh, in fact, research suggests that authors tend to ascribe the value of their work that is higher than the public is willing to pay, creating inefficiencies for the market and potentially market failures. So what is it that might explain this valuation is symmetry between copyright owners and users. This is what was my major concern in this research, understanding what causes this difference in evaluating intellectual property and especially copyright. As I was developing my research, it became clear to me that I needed to look at psychology and behavioral economics to understand the reasons why people value uh, property and intellectual property differently and this is what I did and this is what I want to show you uh, from now on. The first concept to come to my attention was the endowment effect which is a tendency for people to value that which they own more highly than the opportunity to obtain goods or service of equivalent value in the market. Uh, in a system where artistic creations are seen as property and are protected by a property ruled systems, uh, the owners tend to overvalue their possessions, just as it happens with another type of property. Uh, but actually, a recent study suggests that the endowment effect in intellectual property is even more influential than in traditional property contexts. Uh, the reason for that is what uh, psychologists call the creativity effect. In their studies, uh, painting owners valued their, their paintings 127% more than painting owners, demonstrating the regular endowment effect. However, the authors who actually painted the, the, the works valued them 316% more than non-painting owners, demonstrating the, uh, what is dubbed the creativity effect. This can certainly help to understand why there is this asymmetry between authors and user valuations, but it gets more complex than that, as we shall see. IP valuation is harder to estimate than regular property valuation. Uh, some specialists argue that the value of a certain IP right can be calculated by the amount of money that a copyright user can obtain by licensing, using or selling the work times the chance of success in generating this amount. Uh, when making this, this calculation, copyright owners are exposed to another bias called optimism, in, in which they tend to overestimate their chances of success, causing even more higher estimated value for their copyright protected uh, property. Uh, these biases can help us understand why authors and 
uh, copyright owners evaluated the the property so differently from users and the general public. But yet another psychological bias can demonstrate other inconsistencies in the copyright system. Daniel Kahneman was the first to demonstrate a bias called loss aversion, in which people prefer not losing than gaining. Uh, for example, someone who loses $100 will be probably more unsatisfied than another person who found $100 on the floor will be satisfied. Uh, in fact, Feynman has found that for the average person, losses are, psychologically speaking, twice more powerful than gains. Therefore, if an, indiv if an individual uh, loses $50 and another one gains $100, the variation on their satisfaction should be the same. Now, when creating a work, authors are necessarily being influenced by other authors, but they tend to value these gains over other people's work less than they value the losses they estimate when other people copy their work. This may explain why in 1996, when developing Macintosh, Steve Jobs stated that Apple has always been shameless about stealing great ideas, but in 2010 he declared war, uh, war against Android, arguing it was a stolen product. Uh, of course, there are more interests influencing this kind of posturing, but everyone is subject to these biases. So now we understand some of the possible reasons behind this uh, asymmetry in the market, but now we are going to see what are the consequences, what is the problem of this asymmetry, and why the system is flawed, uh, what is so wrong about it and why should we change it. The copyright system takes as a premise that the market can efficiently allocate rights. Relying on this premise, copyright is designed as a property rule system, giving owners the, the power to exclude others. By arming the authors with the power to exclude, we assume that the law and the market will allow the copyright system to encourage authors to create and distribute uh, their works to the benefit of society. However, the truth is there is not empirical evidence of that whatsoever, and the premises behind this argument has been shown to be wrong, not least because people are subject to biases that blur their capacity to behave ration, uh, rationally uh, in the market and, and reach the efficient price. Copyright and IP as a whole concept should not be overestimated uh, nor underestimated. Uh, certainly, it has contributions and justifications, but it is time to rethink the system that relies on a false premise and does not accomplish it, its goals. Uh, so from now on, uh, I'm going to give an example of how the system is uh, creating a problem, how the system is not working. So the best example I can think about uh, copyright failure is the Grey album, produced by DJ Danger Mouse. This work was a mix uh, inspired by Jay-Z's Black Album and the Beatles' White Album. The Grey album was published on the internet and it was a huge success, but Capitol Records, uh, who owns the, the, the copyrights to the Beatles' White Album, contacted DJ Danger Mouse and he agreed to stop distributing the, the album. But it was too late. Uh, Ultimately, it was the most successful album of 2005, and it was actually sold. If it was actually sold, it could be the best seller of the year. But instead, Danger Mouse, The Beatles, uh, Capitol Records, and Jay Z, they never made money with that. Uh, and of course, lots of people who could have access to the to the album legally lost this possibility. Uh, the only people that may have made money with that was the copyright lawyers. So, instead of promoting creation, copyright law discouraged creation. Uh, as Vert analyzed it better than I could, and he said, and, and I'm quoting, as a matter of pure legal doctrine, the Grey, the Grey Album is breaking the law, end of story. But copyright law was written with a particular form of industry in mind. The, f the flourishing of information technology gives powerful tools to build and share valuable art drawn from pieces of popular culture. There is no place to plug such an important culture sea of change 
into current legal regime. So not only copyright system relies on false premises, but it's beginning to get outdated. So it is time to rethink it. People assume that the burden of proof should be on those who advocate for a change in corporate law. I personally disagree with that. The burden of proof should be on those who believe in property rule based system for copyright to demonstrate its actual value. The system we created does not keep up with technology and it relies on a false premises. Uh, besides that, there is no empirical evidence that corporate law, the way it is designed, incentive uh, creation. Actually, the Grey Album is a great example of how sometimes the system can do exactly the opposite. Uh, this doesn't mean that copyright should not exist. Uh, some people defend that as I said in the beginning. But I tend to agree with uh, people like Professor Lassick. The point of this presentation and this research is to show that copyright became so powerful and so expensive that it started to discourage creation instead of encouraging it. Uh, the reason for that is, I believe, the fact that society designed the system assuming false premises. And on top of that, this system is now outdated. So there are some reasons why copyright is in crisis and why it is time to rethink it. And for me, there is no doubt about it. So thank you very much. Uh, my name is Pedro, once again, and thank you.